Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the derivative of uh, the inverse hyperbolic trig functions now. And uh, we're going to start with the uh, inverse hyperbolic sine function. So d dx of inverse singe of x equals 1 divided by the square root of x squared plus 1. So let's uh, zoom in on that for now just a little bit. So again, uh, d dx of the inverse hyperbolic sine of x equals 1 divided by the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and see how we're going to do this here. So uh, in order to do this, what we want to remember uh, from pre-calculus or trig or wherever uh, is that um, inverse hyperbolic sine of x is the same thing as natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, so just by definition, uh, this is what it is. Because um, we're not going to go through all the details because it's kind of a topic for another video, um, for a pre-calculus or a trig video. But uh, remember, sinh x equals e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. Okay, so, um, you know, if you want, you could say, let this be equal to y. Uh, so if y is this, which is sinh of x, then, you know, um, if you want to find the inverse function, swap the x's and the y's, uh, and then solve for y. So uh, when you do that, you're going to get this function up here. So it is kind of a kind of a messy process, not really, kind of sort of, it's uh, not too bad, I guess. But um, it, it is a topic for a different video. So for now, uh, or what we're going to do is just go through this uh, here. So singe uh, inverse of x equals this. So if we want to find the derivative of singe inverse, we're just going to do the derivative of this, and we're going to have to use chain rule on this. Um, and it won't really be too bad, kind of. But let's just go ahead and jump right in. So d dx of singe inverse of x uh, equals d dx of natural log of x plus square root of x squared plus 1. All right, and we've got to have these parentheses. Um, and then these brackets, not really necessary, but you're good to have. OK, so what do we have? We basically just have derivative of a natural log, right? So remember uh, the rule, the chain rule says uh, derivative of natural log of a thing is just 1 over that thing times the derivative of that thing. Okay, so 1 over that thing times the derivative of that thing. Okay, oops, all right, there we go. So uh, chain rule says if you want to take the derivative of the natural log of a thing, that's just going to be equal to 1 over that thing times the derivative of that thing. So now let's go ahead and simplify this here. So uh, this is pretty much just going to stay what it is for now. And then over here, we're going to differentiate term by term. So first we'll do derivative of that, and then plus the derivative of that. So this is going to be equal to uh, 1 over x plus root x squared plus 1. That just stays like that for now. And then uh, what do we have? Now here, if we differentiate term by term, derivative of x is just 1, right? So that's uh, not too bad. So 1 plus what? Uh, we want to take a derivative of this. So let's come down here uh, and look at that off to the side. So we want the derivative of this guy here. So uh, first of all, root x squared plus 1. Uh, let's come up here first, I guess. Root x squared plus 1. That's the same thing as x squared plus 1 to the 1 half power, right? So if we want to take a derivative of root x squared plus 1, that's just like taking a derivative of this, because that's what that is. So um, if we want the derivative of x squared plus 1 oops, uh, to the 1 half power, uh, what does the chain rule say to do? Okay, well, the chain rule says start at the x and then work your way out to see what the big guy is. So here the big guy is raising things to the 1 half power, okay? So uh, if we just have x to the 1 half, then the derivative, uh, if we just have d dx of x to the 1 half, then the derivative of that would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half, right? Um, but the chain rule says do the derivative of the big guy and then evaluate it at the little guy. So this is the derivative of the big guy, but we want to evaluate it at the little guy. So this is going to be 1 half times x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half. Uh, let's make it a little more clear. And then the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the little guy. The little guy is x squared plus 1, so the derivative is just 2x. Okay? So now let's simplify that. 
um, 1 half times x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half times 2x. So the 1 half and the 2 cancel. All right. And then what we're left with is uh, an x on the top. And then x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half, that means uh, x squared plus 1 to the 1 half on the bottom like that. But again, 1 half power just means square root, right? So let's go ahead and uh, write that as a square root. So if we write that as a square root, then what do we have? Uh, we just have this. Okay. So that's the derivative of this term here. The derivative of square root of x squared plus 1 is just going to be x over the square root of x squared plus 1. So let's go ahead and toss that into here now. Um, x over the square root of x squared plus 1. All right, so that's what we got from differentiating term by term there. So now, um, let's go ahead and write that a little bit differently. Uh, let's write it, where do we want to put this? Let's go ahead and write it like this. Uh, 1 plus x over root x squared plus 1. And then on the bottom, we have x plus root x squared plus 1. Okay, so it's kind of a mess, right? Kind of, sort of. So what we have here is a complex fraction. You know, here's a fraction inside of a bigger fraction. Um, and we've also got this radical down here. So uh, you might be tempted to say, okay, complex fraction. So let's simplify that. Uh, we'll multiply the top and the bottom by something to get rid of the complex fraction. Or uh, in other words, we'll get a common denominator up here so that we don't have a fraction in a fraction anymore. Um, but, well, first of all, that's okay to do that. It'll work. Um, and it's not really a bad idea, but it'll make things just a little more complicated later on. So um, what we'll do instead is multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. So what's the conjugate of the bottom? Um, well, in this case, it would be x minus root x squared plus 1. So again, if you want to get rid of this complex fraction first, if you want to get a common denominator on the top, or if you just want to simplify it to get rid of the complex fraction in some other way, uh, you can go ahead and do that, but it'll make a, a later it'll make a step later on a little more difficult. Um, so let's just avoid doing that. Okay. So if we want to expand all this now, uh, now we're just going to foil on the top um, and on the bottom as well. Okay. So what's going to happen here? Uh, if we foil on the top. We're kind of running out of room here. Um, let's move back up. So we're going to have to erase all this, and we're going to move back up. Okay, so if we want to move back up now, uh, let's zoom out just a bit. Okay, so we're going to move back up. Um, if we foil on the top, what do we get? First gives us just x, so uh, just x. And then outer gives us minus root x squared plus 1. We have minus square root of x squared plus 1. Inner gives us x over root x squared plus 1 times x. So in other words, plus uh, x squared over root x squared plus 1. Uh, and then last is going to be plus x over root x squared plus 1 times negative root x squared plus 1. So positive, negative, they combine to give us a minus sign here. Uh, and then x over root x squared plus 1 times root x squared plus 1. Uh, let's go ahead and just write it out just to show the details. x over root x squared plus 1 times root x squared plus 1. Uh, they're going to cancel, okay? And then we're just going to be left with the x, so that's good. Uh, and then what happens on the bottom, okay, so that's the top. Uh, the bottom simplifies a little bit more nicely. So on the bottom, first gives us just x squared. Outer gives us minus x root x squared plus 1. So we'll, I guess we'll just write it out here. Uh, minus x root x squared plus 1. Inner gives us plus x root x squared plus 1. And then last is going to be minus uh, the quantity x squared plus 1. Okay. Because uh, last gives us root x squared plus 1 times negative root x squared plus 1. So it's really negative root x squared plus 1 uh, squared like that. Okay, so it's negative x squared plus 1. That's why we got to put those parentheses there um, because of that. So watch out for that. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Um, now, because we multiply by the conjugate, you know, of course the outer and the inner are going to cancel. And then I just wrote these all out to, just to show you the detail. So that's that. Okay, so that's what we have here. Um, let's, I guess, erase this and then come back down. 
definitely need more room for this. Um, anyway, what's going to happen here? So on the top, what do we have? x minus root x squared plus 1 plus x squared over root x squared plus 1 minus, this is just x now, right? This is just x. So x, blah, 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 minus x. So those are going to cancel. x minus x cancels. And then on the top, we're left with uh, negative root x squared plus 1 plus x squared over root x squared plus 1. What happens on the bottom? Well, on the bottom, these uh, outer and inner terms are already canceled, and we also have x squared minus the quantity x squared plus 1. But uh, x squared minus the quantity x squared plus 1, that simplifies to x squared minus x squared minus 1, which is actually just minus 1. So that's great. Uh, the bottom just simplifies to minus 1. Okay? And if you divide everything by negative 1, that's actually the exact same thing as multiplying by negative 1. Um, all it's going to do is change the sign of everything. So this minus sign becomes a plus sign, uh, and then this plus sign becomes a minus sign. All right? And actually, uh, because this is the first term, we don't really even need the plus sign at all. So this is what we have here. Okay? So we've got that so far. All right, what next? So we're almost there. Um, now, what we want to do is get a common denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. So to get a common denominator, uh, we got to multiply. So this is like over 1, right? So we got to multiply this by, uh, common denominator is going to just be this guy. So we multiply by root x squared plus 1 over root x squared plus 1. Okay. Um, so then when we do that, what do we get? Let's zoom in a little bit on that. Okay, so we just had this stuff here in the purple. Um, root x squared plus 1 minus this stuff over here. And then we want to get a common denominator, so we write it like this. Uh, so then when we simplify, root x squared plus 1 times root x squared plus 1 is just x squared plus 1. And then minus this x squared all over the common denominator now is just this guy, right? So we multiply the top and the bottom by this over here, and we got our common denominator now. So that, that's uh, just root x squared plus 1. Okay, but notice uh, x squared plus 1 minus x squared. So x squared cancel with minus x squared. And we are just left with a positive 1 divided by the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay? Uh, and that's the proof that the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sine uh, is equal to 1 over root x squared plus 1. Okay. I just want to point out real quick that uh, the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic cosine is pretty much going to be exactly the same thing, um, except instead of the plus 1, we're going to have the minus 1. Um, so in that video, which is next in the playlist, um, I'm going to skip some of the details because it's all of the same details that are in here, all right? just uh, to let you know. So that'll be coming up in the next video.